At a time when the Congress is already facing existential questions once again after the recently concluded Assembly elections, what it did not need were explosive revelations from a former President and Congress veteran that paint a scathing portrayal of Rahul Gandhi. I'm Barkhadat, you're with the Mojo Story. Today we'll be taking you inside the Pranam Mukherjee diaries, all 51 of them. In an interview with me, Sharmishta Mukherjee, Pranam Mukherjee's daughter, takes us inside these diaries to present the portrait of a man who's described as having the arrogance of the Nehru Gandhi family without their acumen. There's a lot else that's said in these diaries and in this interview as well. The interview is up on our platform. Pranam Mukherjee, in one of his last diary entries just months before he died, described the stranglehold of the Gandhi family on the Congress party as an example of the worst form of hegemony. He also turned the gaze inwards and wondered whether blind loyalty by netas like himself had also contributed to this hegemony. By contrast, the same book and the same diary entries, while ideologically opposed to Narendra Modi, praise him as a politician. There's a lot to unpack in these revelations, even as most commentators believe that the message from these elections is that Narendra Modi is cruising towards a victory in 2024. Let's introduce our panel today as we look at the revelations from the Pranam Mukherjee diaries and where that leaves the Congress party. Joining us on the program today is Professor Shruti Kapila. Uh, she is a professor at Cambridge University, has also been in conversation with Rahul Gandhi on his visits to the university. Thank you, Professor Kapila, for joining us. Also joining us is Rashid Kidwai, a veteran journalist and author, someone who knows, in my opinion, the Congress and indeed politics better than most other people. Thank you, Rashid. Always a pleasure. Tehseen Poonawala, a diehard supporter of the Congress party, but off late has been agitated with the direction that his party has been moving in and that his party has been taking. And also joining us is Sadarand Dhume, who has a column out in the Wall Street Journal just hours ago talking about Narendra Modi's near certain victory in 2024 with some very acerbic accompanying tweets on Rahul Gandhi as well. Welcome everybody to the program. I'll be playing clips uh, from that interview in just a moment. But Rashid, let me start with you. Uh, you know, uh, you've covered the Congress for decades. Pranam Mukherjee is not somebody who can be ignored, taken lightly, even if uh, trolls from the Congress side are today uh, uh, sort of trolling Sharmishta as a sellout to the BJP and, you know, those kind of predictable reactions. Pranam Mukherjee's appraisal of Rahul Gandhi and indeed the entire family uh, cannot be ignored, can it? Um, Rashid, go ahead. Yeah, so I think Barkha, you asked a very uh, pertinent question. Uh, you know, uh, politicians are uh, basically they are human beings. They are uh, in flesh and blood. They have a sort of a disagreement, uh, uh, joys and disappointment with the leadership. And Mr. Pranam Mukherjee is a very is kind of you know classical case. I'm not so sure why this kind of this diary. Uh, unless Mr. Pranam Mukherjee had will have been published because you know what was the purpose of this uh, diary account? Uh, uh, Marka, you have known Pranam Mukherjee like I have known. We used to meet him and he was keeping diary as a record. Then he wrote a series of books, uh, three part you know books, whatever he had to say, he said it. Now the thing is basically, I mean I have gone through uh, this uh, Sharmista's book also. Uh, the diary entries are actually very, if you you know read from cover to cover, they are contradictory. One day he's happy, he's in good mood. So he said something about Sonia Gandhi, you know, the kind of, you know, great, uh, you know, style she has and how, you know, pretty she looked at a state banquet and, you know, even Obama could not help complimenting. The other day, you know, he's sort of, he's in bad mood because on the, some kind of, on a defense issue, he was ticked off by, you know, Sonia. So he would make another kind of remark. Now, unless you know everything, then you know, things in perspective like Mr. Pranam Mukherjee saying that the you know continuation of Gandhi is the worst form of hegemony I mean that is what he has said I have read it and it's like in quotes but I also know yeah. uh, 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 Barkha for sure that at one point of time when Sonia Gandhi was not you know not even a member of parliament she had just taken over a congress president and they wanted uh, I mean uh, she had taken over and in the congress sorry this I'm talking about when Dr. Uh, Manmohan Singh became a prime minister and they wanted an upper hand so Mr. Pranam Mukherjee tweaked the CPP, uh, you know, constitution, Congress party in parliament 
to create a thing that uh, you know the cpp chairperson that being sonia gandhi would have powers to appoint leaders in two houses it looks very innocuous but the meaning was that she is empowered to appoint you know the prime minister that being leader of the house in lok sabha i mean today it sounds bizarre because the congress has no hope of i mean sonia gandhi appointing a leader in the lok sabha but technically speaking today i mean she has appointed malika arjun kharge as a leader of opposition in rajya sabha she whenever time comes i mean uh, if it at all it happens she will have power to appoint the prime minister from the congress side i mean i, I keep repeating if at all but the point is this power was given to her by who by mr prabhu mukherjee so we don't get to know you know the exact uh, i mean kind of you know what was going on in the party we read a book and we say oh look at this gandhi is and you know they are dynast and look at even pranam mukherjee his there so many accounts i have read i mean i have read uh, fatehdar's account i have read most uh, of course network since account most leaders who actually got everything from the party and so to say from the family uh, you know they present a picture as if they got nothing and these the gandhis are you know the ones who rashid are... Ra- rashid if we could have a separate discussion on whether pranab has been disloyal ungrateful all of those things but are you questioning the vira- no i'm saying there are people who have made those comments today online you're saying the full context we don't know but the fact is it is still damaging for the congress at a time when questions are already being raised about the efficacy of rahul gandhi as a political leader all over again right rashid before i take that to tehsi yeah so i think barkha if if mr you know uh, i mean lk advani or even atal bari bajpai anybody who who maintains a diary anybody's diary will have this flavor what i'm saying is you see he was a public figure a bharat ratna uh, you know president of india i mean i have not questioning sharmishta she's a good friend of mine but did she have that kind of concern did pranam mukherji will that this the beach book of this nature uh, you know should come out i mean i think this is a very important thing it's not a private matter between you know a uh, uh, da- daughter and father because <laughs> I, as i keep repeating was a you know he's a public figure and he got this he wrote you know the three volumes are there with me he wrote extensively about coalition era his days in rashtrapati bhavan everything he wrote whatever he meant to write whatever perhaps he did not want to you know to see light of the day as a i mean as a, a sort of you know journalist and a writer i am very happy because these things have come in public domain but the fact of the matter is i think uh, pranam mukherjee may not have liked uh, you know the book to come out like this and of course the timing of it yeah well we'll never know that pranam mukherjee is not here to uh, to tell us that tehsin punawala before i play out the first clip uh, as somebody who supports the gandhi is almost always in party what would you say this can we unmute this scene yeah. please yeah go ahead this scene thank you i would say it's no coincidence that the book is coming out right now it's not a coincidence it is uh, the favorite pastime of many people to to um, attack the gandhis when they're the most vulnerable i'm not saying mr uh mukherji saw this as uh, he foresaw this or sharmishta is doing it but at the, at this moment mr gandhi is vulnerable he just lost the in or the congress is just lost in the three in the heartland states and mm-hmm. we all know and let's be honest amongst us that attacking the gandhi sells it sells on national tv it sells in books so mm. it does so that's the part that is sensationalized but i agree with what rashid ji said perhaps and i have not read the book perhaps pranab dar wrote some good things as well those have not come out because even in marketing those the parts that will sell that will make the book sensational will be the attacks on rahul and the gandhis now let me just play the devil's advocate okay and i have a lot of respect for pranab da he was very nice to me every time i would meet him at either rashtrapati bhavan or the congress house he'd be very kind and he'd you'd always go out of his way and call me but i am glad mrs gandhi didn't make him prime minister i am very glad she didn't and i and you know i i i say it as blunt as i can i mean Pranab Da was a great politician, but he was, in my opinion, a terrible finance minister. The joke was the finance ministry was not run by him; it was run by somebody else. The fact of the matter is, he got into retrospective taxes. I also know this as a matter of fact that Pranab Da was responsible when Mrs. Gandhi was unwell and the whole Anna uh, uh, movement, the whole Anna drama. And I say this again with a lot of responsibility. This words Anna drama happened. to receive somebody who was a uh, part of the anna team he sent more protocol he sent four ministers more protocol than president obama got but this so is not a dis- that- but this is not a this is not a discussion on the pranam mukherjee legacy i'm sure he was a flawed politician True. on the phone with the no no i don't how think he's, no, that, no i'm not thinking he's how, fraud how, 
how does that change the quest i have read the book and there are some compliments about sonia gandhi there are compliments about manmohan sure. singh uh, there are there there are compliments about narendra modi i have read the whole book I, as i'm sure rashid has but what, what sells about but what, what sells in marketing what sells in marketing is the attacks on gandhis and the and the compliments of prime minister modi now see you've read the whole book so is rashid so you guys know that there's a there are compliments for the gandhis great but that's not come out in marketing so i am just saying that it's too soon to judge there's a saying is you never judge a book by its cover i'm saying don't judge the book by the marketing because marketing in india right now whether television or books unfortunately is attack the gandhis second praise the prime minister there is two ways and that is the bottom reality that does not take away from the credibility of pranab da that does not take away from the authenticity of what charmishta wrote okay uh, that we're not really tackling the elephant in the room which is the fact that he has made comments uh, about rahul gandhi and, and and at a time when that brand is being called into question i want to start by playing out the first clip uh, it's a long uh, 50 minute one hour interview with sharmishta uh, but briefly in the context of rahul lashing out at the ordinance uh, that was brought in by the government while manmohan singh was abroad pranam mukherjee in a diary entry describes it as rahul gandhi's last nail uh, in the congress coffin uh, listen in your father you write was more angry than you had ever seen him before you also say that he said who does he think he is and you said that rahul gandhi has put the final nail in the congress coffin with this talk about that time. yes it was actually you know i happened to be the one who broke the news of rahul gandhi trashing the ordinance to him at, uh, to him and he was livid you know his face became red and he started shouting that you know exactly who the who does he think he is and he's not a member of cabinet mm. and not being a member of cabinet how can he trash a decision of the government of his own government publicly like like this and uh, so at night uh, you know of course which i came to know about it later on i uh, read about it on the same night you know he wrote that this boy has got all the arrogance of gandhi nehru lineage uh, without, without their, their acumen. political <laughs> acumen i remember reading that and later after 2014 you know after the election results were declared and you know we were one day discussing about in general so he said that you know like rahul gandhi is this uh, trashing the ordinance uh, is uh, perhaps one of the final nails in the coffin for congress and he i mean that time i was in politics and they said you know if you are vice president rahul gandhi was then the vice president when the uh, ordinance uh, mm. incident happened they said mm. if you are vice president of your own party trashes publicly his own government you know why should people vote for you yeah but you know i i think of this sentence uh, has all the arrogance of the nehru gandhi family without their political acumen that's a that's a pretty scathing appraisal you were in politics then did you agree with it you today you're out of politics you can speak honestly you know arro- without having the arrogance uh, and without uh, you know my my father would uh, really be able to would have been able to comment on this i mean in his own uh, interaction Uh, with indira gandhi i mean definitely i don't think you know indira gandhi showed him arrogance yeah. in his own interaction with uh, uh, rajiv gandhi or sonia gandhi i don't think you know sonia gandhi would definitely you know there were had been i read many uh, incidents where there was you know heated exchange of fire quote unquote you yeah. know yeah. so i don't think they behaved arrogantly towards them but i guess it is a natural human um tendency that of you know being in power for so long you mm. know of it's concentrated within and as he rightly said was you know in, in 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 37 years if uh, you know five uh, members uh, are from the same family a congress president and one two of three of them were the prime minister obviously some degree of arrogance tend to be there but he also i mean you know writes that uh, the gandhi family uh, members i mean they have uh, also displayed uh, very strong political acumen so his problem with rahul was that you know he might be having all the arrogance but he lacked the acumen having all the arrogance but he lacked the acumen sadanan can i bring you in uh, you have a wall street journal uh, column today arguing that modi is cruising into these elections you also had a pretty scathing tweet on rahul gandhi go ahead yeah what's your question do you think that what comes out in these diaries adds to uh, the sort of reinforces uh, I, the, the 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 perception about rahul gandhi or do you think it makes politically no difference 
I mean, I think there's no question that it would reinforce this, right? Um, by now, basically, there are two storylines on Rahul Gandhi. Uh, the dominant storyline, I would say, for more than a decade, um, at least since the you know, crushing defeat in 2014, but you could date it even farther back you know, to, the, to the Congress's um, awful performance in UP in 2012. But say roughly for a decade, there have been two, sto- two storylines. And one has been that uh, the more negative or the more glass half empty view which is that things are, this guy is just not very good at politics, right? He's not, uh, he's not a natural communicator. He's not a very good judge of people. He doesn't have his pulse on the nation. He doesn't have a capacity to judge what kind of messaging would work. So this has been sort of been, been going on for a long time. And then obviously this defeat, uh, 3-0 in the Hindi heartland, will reinforce that. The second narrative, which I think many people who are close to Congress were, were hopeful of, and I don't blame them, this is not criticism, was that somehow with the Bharat Jodo Yatra, he had like turned a corner, right? This was his coming of age, final coming of age. He'd walked about 4,000 kilometers. Uh, he had mingled with the people. Many people had seen up close that he's a, 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 you know, a decent, thoughtful uh, human being and so on and so forth. And then that was followed by the May... Uh, victory of the party in Karnataka. And you saw many commentators then make the point that, look, maybe there were sort of, you know, question marks over Rahul Gandhi's acumen as a politician until now, but maybe we should time to put that to rest and take him seriously. Um, The biggest problem for Congress is that that old narrative, that old storyline has basically come back, right? And it could not have come back at a worse time for them because you have national elections in Less than uh, in less than in less than six months, so that's uh, you know that's I think a huge problem for them. Um, my own view, and I've held this view for a while, and it's not personal. I'm, I'm sort of you know, Tessin was saying that there's nothing positive that came out. Actually, I was looking. I haven't read the book, but you know, some of the you know excerpts I saw, people did say. In fact, that Pranam Mukherjee pointed out that Rahul Gandhi is a very polite person. Uh, Pranam Mukherjee apparently also pointed out that he is very inquisitive and asks many questions. So it's not, it doesn't sound like it was entirely negative. So obviously it's true that the nature of the media is such that, you know, they're going to play up the juicy parts and the juicy parts tend to be negative. Um, I, I, I think the, 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 the substantive problem is not that by itself, this uh, book published by his daughter after he's passed um, is going to sort of, you know, by itself set a narrative. The problem is that the narrative already exists. And when you have a narrative Mm. that is quite deep-rooted that already exists, then every new bit of evidence that supports it, right? We had the same thing when Obama's memoir came out and he was talking about how, you know, Rahul Gandhi said, you know, how how Rahul Gandhi struck him as kind of tentative and unsure of himself at at the state dinner. Every time you see someone who has had close access to him, it just reinforces an existing story. And so I think objectively speaking, this is obviously bad news for Congress. Okay, let me bring in uh, Shruti and then I'll, t- I'll play out another clip uh, from the conversation. Tehseen, I'm going to request you to lower your device. We can, we're not seeing your lovely face in full. Can you uh, not lower, but raise? You're getting cut. Uh, yeah, uh, Professor Kapila, go ahead. Yes. Can we unmute Shruti, please? Yeah, I have two things to say. One on the genre of political memoirs itself, which tend to be gossipy, tend to kind of, you know, say the kinds of things that people don't say when they're actually in power. So they're actually quite fun, you know, gossipy. To that extent, this is pretty tame stuff because it's pretty safe. You know, they're out of office. They're done. One man is not even alive. And there's a very different Pranam Mukherjee you actually see in Nirja Chaudhary's book, where he's a kind of bitter man, you know, thwarted man. So, you know, as a historian, I love it as a kind of, you know, uh, you know, draft, you know, some empirical draft on what went on. And, you know, remember, I've just come from London where people's WhatsApp messages with, you know, to the sitting PM have made it to the COVID inquiry. And that is really irreverent, mm-hmm. damning stuff. This is tame. This is frankly quite tame at, 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 in, in, in every given way, quite apart from the fact that, you know, it sort of repeats the old stereotypes that have been going on for some time. Now, the second question is actually about the Congress and the leadership question and, you know, whether, uh, you know, whether this is kind of, you know, uh, what does it say about it? And there, actually, I'm going to make a different point, which is that actually, if you look at the history for the last 30, 35 years, certainly, you know, from 86 onwards, when B.B. Singh is kind of, you know, breaking apart the Congress, um, you know, uh, Congress party as it's as it stood, uh, then you really realize that actually the Congress has not come out 
of that psychodrama for now 30, 40 years. It's a long time. And those personalities are still playing, you know, cock snook, you know, doing all the rest. And it's actually, whether he's successful or not, I think, you know, what uh, Rahul Gandhi at least tries, has tried, I'm not talking about the last 10 years, I'm talking about the last few years, is to actually give Congress a new narrative. Where, you know, and there is some success. I'm not talking about Bharat Jodo Yatra. I mean, the vote share does speak to the success, to, to be able to hold on to something. It's not winnable yet, and it won't be winnable, but that's not down to just the personality. That is the lack of clarity that the Congress has on its ideas, on its um, on its organization. And as it were, you know, it has not actually purged its really bad history, which is still dogging it from the 80s. Can, can, I, can I get Sadar to, uh, to briefly respond to that? I mean, Shruti, Shruti says, and a lot of uh, Congress people are also arguing this, that our vote share, our overall votes polled are bigger than the BJP. We are in the first past the post system. There are sections of the Congress that are questioning the EVMs. Uh, Shruti believes it might take long, but Rahul Gandhi has re-energized the Congress, albeit the ideological confusion and which paths to take remains within the Congress. Do you agree? Well, look, I mean, I, I think that, you know, if you were to just judge him, if you were to sort of step back and take, try, to try at least try and take some of the sort of emotion out of this, right? Um, let's, let me just put it this way. If Rahul Gandhi were a cricketer with a string of scores that are the equivalent of his political scores, would he still be in the team, let alone leading a team? If Rahul Gandhi was a Bollywood actor with the string of flops that he's to his name, would he still be able to get producers to bankroll his movies? Um, this is not a new story, Barkar, right? We're not like having this conversation in, in 2014 summer. We're having this conversation in December 2023, we're having this conversation after he has already led Congress to its two worst defeats in its history. And now you have a third defeat. I could be wrong, but it seems like most of the evidence leans towards a, a third defeat um, coming up. Uh, I take Shruti's point that it's creditable to you know, retain vote share in the, in the heartland states. But I would add the caveat that, you know, you, if you, if you, um, it's very clear now that Indian voters vote, vote differently uh, in state elections and in Lok Sabha elections. We saw what happened last time, right? The Congress won Rajasthan and they lost every single Lok Sabha seat. They were absolutely drubbed in the Hindi heartland. There's no reason to believe that they're not, uh, you know, heading for another drubbing. And I again take the point that, okay, maybe we shouldn't overly personalize it. It can't all be about one person. Fair enough. There are all kinds of other factors. There are ideological factors. There's the rise of populism. There's a breakdown of old elites. There are many, many different things going on. Um, but, you know, in the end, that's exactly what leaders are, 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 are there to resolve. They're there to resolve these questions of ideolo ideology. They're there to resolve these questions of personnel and, and, and organization. And there's no way a reasonable person can say it's working. The best you can say is that, look, I hope that it may work in the future. But the test has to be elections, right? It has to be election victories. And if, as long as you're not winning elections, I don't see how anyone can say that it's working. Okay. Okay, let's bring in Tehseen and then Rashid. Tehseen, I think, I think Sadanan's question goes to the heart of the matter. Shruti is talking about a long haul process of revival. But in corporate, in, in the corporate world, in Bollywood, in, uh, in sport, this, you know, this would be too long already. If you were the CEO of a company, if you were uh, an actor, if you were a, a sports person, uh, you would be out. Uh, yeah, one second. Tehseen and then Shruti can interject after that. Tehseen? Tehseen? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You, you guys are unmute. You guys are mute me. Anyways, I completely agree with what Sadanan said. Congress is losing states after state, and it doesn't seem as much as I do want it to in 2024 that it's going to win 2024. And the problem with the Congress party is it keeps repeating the same mistake again and again. So there is an issue with the Congress party that they need to introspect about. My limited earlier submission was that, okay, I understand that these issues about Rahul Gandhi ji, which have come out in the past, whether it's Obama's uh, book or any other books, are already there in public knowledge. And that is only an easy marketing tool. There may be very many other things, positive, negative. I haven't read the book. But again, I question Pranabda with a lot of humility. Did Pranabda, while he was in the Congress, ever question Rahul Gandhi's, uh, while he was in the Congress, was facing, you are not capable or whatever that Pranabda thought? Or you have the arrogance of the Gandhi family without the political acumen? Did Pranabda go to Mrs. Gandhi when 
the corporates were backing him to become president and you know which corporate was backing him and say hey um, your son doesn't have he was praising rahul gandhi all along now you write something else i am okay. saying that you are as much a part barka once again you are as much a part of the pro- problem if you don't you are as much a part of the problem if you don't tell somebody on their face what is wrong the problem with me is i tell people on their face what's wrong so i agree that the congress has a problem i will tell out the problem this congress has a terrible problem the congress believes sometimes the congress believes in its own fake narrative that it creates and then it goes with it i agree with all of those things the congress is not does not have the political acumen but then have the guts to say it on the face don't take all the privileges and then write something bad and one more thing Congress party made Pranab Dada the president of India, the president of India. Is this Dada? No one can do it. It's like I was in a debate uh, on your former channel with Manish Shankar Iyer, and Manish Shankar Iyer. I'm I'm not making this up, Sadhana. I'm not making this up. Believe you me. He tells that he didn't get anything in the two thousand nine election, which Congress and DMK swept. The guy lost an election. And he didn't get anything. He got Rajya Sabha. They sent him Rajya Sabha by the presidential route and made him a minister. and he saying usko kuch nahi mila bhaiya sab aap hi ko milega to humko kab milega so these guys once i know sorry i'm being blunt ye inhi ko chahiye president banne ke baad bhi hame kuch nahi mila i am upset bhaiya log pradhan bante na gaon ke they get super happy ye president bane bharat ke and he's unhappy wow wow amazing okay okay hang hang on hang on shruti a brief interjection and then rashid yeah so my point is not, my point is not that it's just a long haul game though it is also that because after all the bjp took you know 30 40 years to become where it is the question uh, really now for for the congress is that how does it reset itself and the problem mm-hmm. is that it has not been able to shed the baggage of the last 30 odd years and you know in some ways this fascination of fixation with with rahul gandhi is actually entirely misplaced i mean to be honest it really is because you know if because by the same token we are not as critical of many other leaders and i'm not saying he's not deserving of criticism or he shouldn't face it but i think we have to kind of actually look at at what has happened to the congress in the last 30 40 years and and then if we look at that story then you actually think that there has been a break that has been made in about as it were the last two i would say two to three years okay. only and 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 that is you know but I, and 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 i think you know whether it is about elections or whether it is about ideology they will obviously need to, my view would be to if you're actually going to be really like you know strong about it get rid of all this you know new labor had to actually reset get rid of this old guard you know take you know go for the go for broke but but, but 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 shruti but shruti you know the congress they, they, the congress they, they, the congress cm candidates in madhya pradesh it, it is in madhya pradesh has been around as long as sanjay gandhi kamal nath so we are talking about you know a new a new <laughs> labor type model. yeah i'm not going yeah, to get tessie, into tessie okay tessie is trying to say something tessie yeah tessie Uh, and you, uh, I, I, sorry, Ashok Gello Ji, some uh, teacher. He's also been around since that. Since uh, and so, no, this is this is catching only one person. Kamal Nath, no. what has Ashok Gello done? No, I'm not so, talking. He was calling. What was he calling? Let's not. Let's not. Yeah. No, no. I'm I'm talking about something else, which is an okay. inability Let's to manage it. factional conflict, and that's because the party has been associated as a party of power. Now, if you're not a party of power, you first need to smell the coffee that you are now no longer in power. Okay, okay, hang on, everybody. Rashid and then Sadanan. Rashid and then Sadanan. Only because Rashid's been waiting a long Marta. time. Rashid, I, I have a, I have a small question. This idea that Pranam Mukherjee should be grateful, and I I I have to say I disagree with this because if gratitude is going to define what people say or not, even after their death, there would be no memoirs. or memoirs would only be politically correct this means that if you worked at some place for 30 years you can never even after you die not talk about or not have the world know what you actually felt when you were there rashid go ahead yeah so uh, barka on that your that point you see pradam mukherjee had a habit of saying things you know the three things a and b so we would always ask sir where does it see part gone so that is what he reflected in his memoirs he only talked about a and b and the c part was missing now the problem is c part has come in this form through this diary uh, you know entries and all that's why it's you know there is a lot of disquiet i think the coming to your congress thing i think the congress story is either highly exaggerated or underplayed see you look at this elections elections happened in actually in five states the three states of course the congress regional satraps performed 
badly. They were given some sort of free hand and there were a lot of expectation. In Telangana, you know, the Congress defied all political logic and punditry and everything. So it's a huge success in Telangana. So it's not that the, you know, the Congress is dead and gone. I think it fight. See, the problem with Congress is the pitted against Mr. Narendra Modi's personality, welfareism, muscular nationalism, uh, you know, cultural nationalism. The Congress cannot improve on some of these parameters. And that is a real problem. The problem with Rahul Gandhi is, and I, I, I sympathize with him, he is looking for constantly, you know, Adine Elahi. And Adine Elahi is presented to him by, you know, Yogendra Yadav, Jairam Ramesh and all those things. And Barkha, the history, you know, the Adine Elahi was not even practiced by Jodhabai and Mullah Dopiyase, who was the closest yes. distinct to Emperor Akbar. This is his problem. Chokidar Chor hai, you know, Dalit, I mean, this, uh, you know, Kasbir Reservation, this is all Adine Elahi for him. And he's taking his <laughs> shine for it. That is his problem. You can this accuse is, him uh, of that. This is the quote of the day, the DNA Elahi uh, pursuit of Rahul Gandhi. Sadaram, go ahead. Hang on, let me unmute you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I, I love that analogy, but at least DNA Elahi was being propagated by someone who actually wielded power. This guy is not even at the stage where he gets to wield power and then propagate his DNA Elahi, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's sort of, I mean, the, the, the bigger challenge for Congress really is how do you get to power? And I just want to sort of, you know, I, I didn't really understand what Shruti was saying. I mean, is, is Shruti's view that over the last two or three years, Congress has begun to make a break from the past and it, it may be on the path to rejuvenation? I mean, is this an optimistic take on where the Congress is headed? Because if it is, I'm just genuinely curious because I don't understand how any human being can come to that conclusion. Go ahead, Shruti. Go ahead, Shruti. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the proof is in the Karnataka election, the proof is in the Telangana election, in Himachal Pradesh, and a dogged sort of holding on to the vote share, of course not a victory, in the Hindi heartlands. And a new president, so it's not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, it's enough. I'm not saying it's enough. It's far from enough. But it, it, it obviously, you know, has, as it were, there is a reset. I agree with uh, Mr. Kidwai on, on, on this kind of way in which a kind of ideological map is being drawn. Today, Pratap Bhanu Mehta has a very, very sharp piece. That, and, and I think as a historian, we have this kind of classic question that political change always comes with, with the disaffection of the elites. Now, the problem, part of the problem for the Congress is that it has actually left rising political uh, rising social elites out of its reckoning and and and, and that is a huge problem uh, and so it ha it'll have to think a little bit more interestingly given that we are decidedly in a hindu first uh, polity led by a very popular prime minister which doesn't mean that you know it's game over. I mean, the, the results actually show the opposite, that there's actually a tussle in, in the Indian system. Okay, do you, uh, 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 Tahithin, do you see the tussle? I'll come to Sadanand and Rashid after that. Do you see the tussle that Shruti sees? Tahithin? No, what I see in the Congress is the Badusha Zafar uh, problem. Badusha Zafar thought he was the Jahapana or he was the king of uh, India. He ruled not a few kilometers around his uh, little palace. So you have, uh, Shruti says that in uh, Congress's problem is it's lefty rising elites out. No, Congress's problem is that it has only elites. One of the names that Rashid Ji took, I call him Duggal Saab. One day he's a farm leader, another day is an RTI expert, third day is a Bharat Jodo spokesperson, fourth day is a cephalogist. This guy has done I, I, everything to destroy this guy has done everything swipe, to obvi ob ob Obviously, you're taking a swipe at Yugendra Yadav. Can we come out of these pictures? I want to ask Tahseen directly. This guy who wanted Congress dead has done everything to destroy the party. He actually said, I was on a show with him. I think he told you also, if, I, if I'm not uh, mistaken, that Congress actually did not believe in the OBC thing in, in Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. No, bro, Congress lost Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh because you went ahead with the OBC reservation. Shivrat Singh Chauhanji was an OBC chief minister. Bhupesh Maghel was an OBC chief minister. Chhattisgarh is a tribal state. This, he, he, over his wine and cheese and car market get-togethers, he thinks people should not learn English. This guy has been advising the Congress and has been one cause of the downfall. And people like him, the absolute elite. But let me say another thing. I was on another but TV show. Not, but, 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 but I have to... I, I, but I one second, one second. No, no, no. One second, one second, one second. No, 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 hang on, hang no, on. No, no, just, just, no, this is important. Okay. This is important. I'll tell you what's wrong with the Congress. On another TV show, the Congress spokesperson actually tells that, look, we have something positive in three states. We came second. Bro, you were in a race of two. You coming second is you lost the race. 
I don't. Th- I think they're delusional. There is one spokesperson of the Congress who says, "Hey, EVMs have a problem, but we got more votes than the BJP." Dude, if you got more votes, then there's no problem with the EVM. I don't know. Are they live? You know, so Einstein's theory of relativity has, and if you extend it to string theory, there are different dimensions. I think some of these guys live in different dimensions. They are living in a parallel universe or multiverse which they have no connection with. I mean, how can you, with a straight face, tell me we've got more votes than the BJP, but there's a problem with the EVM? Like, can I, can I speak now? Why would people speak vote now? for them? Can I speak now? I made the same point about EVMs, and uh, not just the Congress, Did but you? a large section of the left. The large section of the left came after me on Twitter to say that it's perfectly possible to targetedly manipulate in narrow margins the EVM machines and so on. That's not my question. My question is to talk about Yogendra Yadav is convenient. You're hitting out at low hanging fruit instead of talking about the leadership. Yogendra Yadav is not driving the strategy of the Congress Party. This is the scene. You're 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 actually you're you're, you're not picking. The big guys, you're picking on the small guys. You're picking on guys who are on the margins of of, of any Congress campaign. I don't find that uh, uh, reasonable. <laughs> oh, these guys, these guys are <laughs> I, 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 the strategy. You know, I, All of these left loonies. Wait, 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 wait. All of these, all of these left loonies are singularly responsible for the downfall of the Congress and along with that with Rahul Ji. Some of these left loonies. Were the same people who were sitting with Anna, saying that there's corruption. The kind of language they use for Mrs. Gandhi. And I, when I say left loonies, I don't mean just Mr. Yadav or etc. I'm talking about the entire cabal of theirs. The entire cabal. They went to Supreme Court on 2G. They were arguing everything. Uh, even, 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 and 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 the problem with the Congress. And I'll explain. The problem is they don't see the political. They they think that these guys are politically beneficial. They aren't. For example. Let me Give another example. Not really a left loony, but somebody who again lives in a parallel universe. Chaturkant Sena. All his life he abused the Congress. Comes to the Congress, he gets a patna seat. His wife gets a ticket. He goes campaign campaigns against a Congress candidate. Then his son gets a patna ticket. Sharad Yadav, who used foul language against Mrs. Gandhi, his daughter gets a ticket. The Congress lives in a different world. You have to. And I keep saying, groom your people and talented people. It's not old versus new. Who It's is, talented versus non-talented. Who is responsible for this? Sadhana yeah, the buck stops. And... With whom? The buck stops. Does... The buck stops. With at... whom? The buck stops With at the whom? leadership. I'm not denying it. I'm I, not denying I, it. I, I therefore I'm critical. You are saying that I'm that's saying that I'm critical of them. Okay. okay But okay, these okay, jokers. Okay. Hmm. okay. So these jokers. Look. These jokers. Yeah, Sadhana. So, yeah. I mean, so, imagine look, a I, race I, of two. You say we came second. I think okay, Tessie so makes a good point, right? I mean, I'll I'll use a sort of you know less slightly less harsh term than left loony, but let's just accept that at this point that Rahul Gandhi does have a tendency to surround himself with, shall we say, sort of uh, leftist revolutionary dilettante types, right? Mm-hmm. This is a sort of you know these these are not people who are who who are necessarily uh, they certainly don't seem to have the pulse of the nation. I think they've like fundamentally kind of miscalculated time and time again, right? Rashid had had some very good examples. Chokidar Chor hai. I remember Barkha, you and I were traveling in that election, and you could just see right there how phenomenally that was like flopping on the ground, and yeah. you know for some reason that's what the Congress was persisting with. Um, now they came up with Jitni Abadi, Jitni Utni Hak. That's also Uh, the Modani thing hasn't really worked for them either. I've, I've made some sort of comments on 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 how their Twitter works, and it seems to me like this is like a group of and these, many of these are very nice people, and you know who we who who we, you sort of we know personally, but it's almost like this is a sort of small bubble of the old Indian elite, and mm-hmm. they have convinced themselves that Narendra Modi is a monster, which they're entitled to that view. The problem for them is that the median voter doesn't think that, and if you want to bring the median voter around, you have to find a way to communicate with that person. Whereas these people are just com- always they're, they're just communicating with each other, so they're convinced that they've already got their message across because they agree with each other. But the challenge that they face is that they have to sort of get to get 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 to the voter. They're struggling to do that. Um, and 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 when it comes to the kinds of advisors that you know that that are surrounding Rahul Gandhi, I mean, I have to say that that's that's not on the advisors. I mean, at this point, you can't say that. I mean, it's clear that those are the kinds of people Rahul Gandhi gravitates to. Those are the kinds of ideas that he finds compelling. He does not gravitate to people who sort of you know would take a more centrist position. He does not gravitate towards people who sort of 
have a kind of, you know, a, a, a sort of a, a more real take on how to win elections in India. He is, he gravitates to a kind of like bookish, leftist, dilettante, you know, IIC lounge kind of person. But that's on him. No one stops him from saying that we're going to have that's a totally right. different... Yeah, 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 yeah. Teh- 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 one sen- Teh- Teh- one sentence, Rashid, and then Shruti, in that order. I'm, I'm just going to... Yeah, Tehseen, yeah. Yeah. One sentence. Yeah. Yeah. I completely I completely agree with what Sadanan says. In fact, no less than my wife told me that her family thinks I'm right. I am as centrist as you get. And she told me, oh, but you know, my family thinks you're right. So you see, it's not, it's not, they've pushed the centrist away, and that's the reason you they're losing. Barka, I'll end this by asking you a political question because all of you are political veterans. Who calls their voters rakshas? Who calls them urine worshipping people? Just I'm ending it with that. The viewers are smart. You have to be politically committing suicide to think that your voters are rakshas or are cow worshipping, urine worshipping people. Who talks like that? You become Twitter trolls in real life, and that's the problem. You're making an I issue of the prime minister going in a dressing room. You're making an issue of the, ta- of the tiger, lion's teeth being big on parliament. Those are not the issues of the people. The issues of the people are employment, jobs, uh, future jobs. You don't speak about them. Then you blame the BJP. That's the problem. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I want to get in, Rashid, on that great point. There's been a lot of commentary on this North-South debate. And some of it is actually suggested that because somebody's Skype is ringing, but meanwhile, some, some of it is actually suggested that because there is higher literacy in the South, there's higher literacy rates in the South, therefore they make the better political choice. This is equivalent to when Hillary Clinton called Trump voters a basket of deplorables. You do not in a democracy as a politician patronize your voter. But go ahead, Rashid. Yeah, I think, Barka, first of all, the Congress problem is is manifested in this program. See, Mr. Tehseen Punawala is not able to say, you see, who is responsible for the mess. He is not naming Rahul Gandhi. This, you know, lack of conviction, lack of, lack of courage huh, is something that is a very telling huh? thing. And it's, it's there, it's evident in this program and it's there in the entire uh, Congress party. People are not able to tell Rahul Gandhi that he is going you know, wrong. I think this whole story about North South and the kind of references are made. They are they are very very disturbing. At the same time, I, it's not very. I would say it's not. It it, it has a lot of precedence. You look at the situation in the Congress also. Congress accused DMK of being you know uh, hand in glove with this Rajiv Gandhi's killers, and then Congress forms government with DMK for ten long years. Uh, you look at yeah. the, you know the kind of uh, Mr. Bajpai says that he has a lot of problems with this. Uh, uh, you know with this. Uh, Sadhvi Pratya and several other, and but all the Giraj Singhs and Goli Malo, they all are there. So I look at the relationship between, I mean, the old Shiv Sena and the BJP when uh, Shiv Sena used to, uh, you know, target South Indians, Muslims, a lot of them. I, the, you know, BJP would, I mean, I would say it was much more than tolerating it. So these contradictions yeah. are there. They are very inevitable part. It's just being made to look, you know, Congress bad. It's not Congress problem. Coalition Dharma is doesn't involve, you know, what is a particular minister or a functionary or a member of parliament of DNK yeah. is saying or not saying. Yeah. I think yeah. this is yeah. wrong. Targeting Rahul on these counts is wrong. Rahul has actually called up last time also. He had called up Stalin and said that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, Uday Giri's remark on this uh, Sanatan Dharam was wrong. So who is so so uh, Rashid? Let me reverse the question to you. You said that there are people around Rahul Gandhi and they set him off on this Dine Elahi pursuit. Even yes. you did not blame Rahul Gandhi. Even you. No, I'm blaming it. I'm blaming it. I'm saying that nobody accuses. You know, nobody says no. No, it was not. Uh, you know, Emperor Akbar's fault. It was you know Fazi and Abul Fazal and all who were mis- misguiding. Nobody blames Nordathan's <laughs> for Dine Lai. Dine Lai was. Emperor Akbar's baby, which you know, could not yeah. take off. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed yeah. to have, you know, all the best things of various religions, but it didn't click. So therefore, that's the thing. I'm openly saying it that, of course, you know, you can't blame the advisors. You are, you have, you, the fault lies yeah. with, uh, you, you know, Indira Gandhi used all those Raj Thapars and a lot of leftists, but she was very successful. She, due to, she was not influenced by it. And there is a person called yeah. Sadeep Singh. There are a lot of criticism within the organization about him. I'm, so it is Rahul Gandhi who used to be blamed, not these individuals. Okay. 
Uh, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, let you go and maybe address that Skype, uh, very persistent Skype caller that you have. But Shruti, very quickly, I, I want to play out another clip before we take last comments. Yeah, Shruti, Shruti, Shruti. Yeah. Just a very quick word. So my point is that it's not that you need to reach out to elites in the old sense. That it's quite right that it, uh, Congress politics is dominated by old elites. But there's a rising new social elite in India, whether it's Dalits, whether it is OBCs, whether it is the tech people, which the, the Congress is not reaching out to. So that's just a clarification. As far as advisors are concerned, you know, they've come and gone. Earlier, they were the managerial types, the MBA types. Today, it's the so-called uh, lefties. That It's not really about that. It really is about actually Congress worker and the kind of political culture. You have no one. I have a large number of friends in Delhi who are associated with the... No one actually wants to spend forget a year, 10 years. No one wants to actually spend time in the hinterland working up there. And if you look at the BJP system, it's only Atal Bihari Vajpayee, who was known to be a Delhi person, Everyone else cut their teeth in, in, in constituencies for, for years, not just the prime minister. I mean, many of them have risen up. So actually, it's about political culture and work and a very, very old habit of being addicted to power and thinking that it is still a party of power. And that is why it is factually, uh, you know, floundering. I think and I, I actually don't... I think you know, you know, it's a big problem. It's a real problem about political culture and the nature of political work. I think it's a great point about the Congress still thinking of, you know, Nitin Gadkari Tehsin used to say the BJP in government, he said this a few years ago, it may not apply now, the BJP in government still behaves as with the aggression of the opposition and the Congress in opposition still behaves as if it's a party of power. And I think that's a very perceptive point that Shruti just made. Very quickly, I do have yeah. one clip more that I'd like to play before last comments. Yeah, go ahead, Tehsin. Yeah. So while I completely concede to whatever is the leadership's fault, and I don't take that away, the point is those now who are running the Congress seem to lack political acumen, which Mrs. Gandhi and her team did have. So when you have an attack being on the size of the teeth of the lion on the parliament, or you're attacking a prime minister for going in a dressing room, I think you're wasting time. What's happened as a result of that? You could do that as a sidetrack. What's happened as a result of that in this Twitter universe, you started believing that you've become, you are, you are now the Twitter universe is now your real universe. And therefore, you've been relegated to Twitter space. You're out of what are real world issues. Now, you can't blame the BJP for that. The BJP is a terrible authoritarian government, one that spares nobody. But if you don't raise the right issues, why do you expect the BJP to? The BJP, of course, exaggerates the issues you brought up. Of course, they do it simply because you brought it up. Who asks you to bring up those issues? So, the, you know, and I'll just end with one example. When the Telangana results were coming out, we had Renuka Chaudhary on a TV show with me. And the arrogance with which she spoke, Telangana was not one because of her. If at all, they must have lost two seats because of her. The arrogance with which she spoke about the North-South, she started it along with that data guy, uh, the black swan, gray swan, green swan guy. And the Chakra, arrogance with which... I, 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 I don't love know his you name. Don't name. I don't know his name. But, 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 the, the arrogance with which you speak, people don't like it. Can you, for God's sake, be a little humble? What is this arrogance? What is this legacy you're carrying? Even and, and, and you just contrast that with how the prime minister behaves. I'm not saying that may or may not be true. But look at how he behaves. And he, yeah, you act as if you are you're entitled. People don't like entitlement. It pisses people off. Yeah, okay. I want to play out just one more clip. I had lots more clips, but you all are so riveting that I have not been able to play my interview clips. However, uh, there is one point at which uh, the front of diaries actually speak about the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi. And it's very, very intriguing because what emerges is that despite fierce ideological opposition uh, to the BJP, uh, Pranab and Modi, according to his daughter, got along famously. Uh, listen to what she says about uh, Modi vis -vis Rahul in Pranab's mind. Pranabda may have ideologically disagreed with the BJP all his life. But he was more impressed with Prime Minister Modi as a politician than he was with Rahul Gandhi. Yeah. Correct? So, yes, absolutely. But so? No, just, I mean, stating, <laughs> yes, just stating absolutely, what comes out absolutely, in the book. Absolutely, yes. Totally, of course. And he uh, I mean, told me many times and also he has written in his diaries, he felt that after Indira Gandhi... I mean, he has never seen another prime minister having such a, 
uh, you know, hold over such, a, such an understanding of people's pulse, you know, like he can read people's pulse, you know. Mm. So that's obviously a great quality for a politician. How so, do you, how do you think uh, the Congress is going to react? You've left politics. Well, I I mean, of course, you know, I mean, uh, no senior leader has reacted anything, but the Congress trolls are already. <laughs> so I'm scared to you know go through my uh, you know. I mean, I'm not Your not timeline. seeing not not seeing the response on my Twitter. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sadanand, uh, you know, she was so matter of fact. Yeah, he thought Modi was a better politician than Rahul. So, I mean, yeah, duh. Like, that's 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 how she said it. And again, it, you know, it's one thing for Tehsin to say Pranab was made president. What more did he want? Well, for starters, the book says he wanted to be prime minister. Uh, but, but okay. It's almost as if, you know, today Pranab's on a loyalty test instead of addressing some of the points that he's making. Uh, go ahead, Sadanand. No, I mean, I think all the criticism of Pranab Mukherjee can be valid, right? You can argue that this is the person who, you know, we would respect a person who says these things to a person's face much more than sort of someone whose views, true views come out posthumously. All those are sort of valid points, but they're irrelevant points also at this point, right? Because he's not part of the picture. Rahul Gandhi is part of the picture. Congress is part of the picture. We're heading into a national election. So, you know, how we judge Pranab Mukherjee in hindsight is sort of a sideshow, right? That's just some, that's just a kind of, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't have any, any real relevance. I mean, I just want to sort of point out one thing here, right? Like in our entire discussion, the assumption is always that maybe somehow Rahul Gandhi can be fixed. Maybe, you know, like Shruti says, okay, clear out the dead weight, bring in the new. Or Tessin says, well, you know, just get rid of these, you know, loony lefty uh, uh, advisors and these people who are completely, you know, completely clueless. But, you know, at some point we have to grapple with the, with the, idea that maybe he can't be fixed and there are solutions to this that exist in politics around the world where people who flop repeatedly they exit and then other more competent people take over why are we not able to accept that an exit option may actually be the best thing for Rahul Gandhi but beyond that it may be the best thing for uh, the Congress and it may be the best thing for the opposition space which India desperately needs I think that's a great question. Shruti, this idea that Rahul's getting better, that one day, if he does A, B, or C, you know, it's not his fault. It's Yugendra Yadav. It's Pranam Mukherjee, that oh, ungrateful I mean, wretch. It is Sandeep Singh. Oh, it's Jairam Ramesh. It's somebody else. It's Digvijay's loud mouth. I think Sadanand asks the pertinent question. Go ahead. So look, I mean, the question is, you have a political family which captures the symbolic and political cap capital of that party. Now it is for that party to decide what it wishes to do with it. You have a Politburo in the CCP, you have a Carter and RSS in, uh, in, in the BJP. This is now written into the Congress DNA and it's up to the Congress what it wishes to do. We can have a different argument, what a different Congress could, or could, could it exist, could it not exist, is it, is it even possible? And you could also see something else which is happening that actually historically, the, if you look at it all the way back to Gandhi, in, you, know, you know, as in Mahatma Gandhi's time, there was a very strong division of political labor across, across the Congress infrastructure. The problem has been that it has now got all, because it's actually shrunk, and because it has not had any institutional revival for about 40 years, I would say, that it has all got terribly fixated on the family for good, bad, ugly, and the rest. You actually need a diversification of institutional structures. You need a new political culture. You need people who are going to go out and do the, the graft. You cannot be just sitting around Delhi and moving around its, you know, five boulevards and, you know, uh, just hoping to get okay. access or to, you know, so that's, no, it's a real problem. I think this is where it's a, it's a problem about political work, leadership, and culture it's not about the family that is the congress's issue okay let's let, 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 let's uh, let's uh, take that briefly so, and then Tessin gets the so, last word yeah. no, no, shruti but that doesn't get to my question my question really is, is is can we possibly conclude that this person is not fixable as a politician right i mean i'm around the same age as him a little bit older i mean i'm very happy to sort of you know I, I recognize that I'm never going to, you know, climb Mount Everest and I'm never going to run 100 meters in 10 seconds. And there are many, many things that I, I'm not going to be able to do. I'm never going to be a Bollywood actor. There are many things that I'm just not ever going to be able to do. You could try. Um, could it be, could it, you know, I mean, why can't we expect 
after such a long history of failure, a sim- similar minimal level of self-awareness without any malice. I mean, the person may be a wonderful person and sort of just a, sort of that, well, you know, this maybe isn't the thing that's, that this person was cut out to do and maybe he can do other things. Maybe he can be, you know, have a travel show on National Geographic. I think he would be actually be really interesting, right? He could, I mean, he could maybe uh, set up a sort of left of center think tank and come up with ideas. I'm not, I'm not saying this in pejorative ways. I, I work in a think tank myself. I just mean like at, at some point, why are all of us as analysts stuck with this idea that somehow this, you know, broken down jalopy can somehow be yeah. fixed with a new engine or with a new, uh, new fender? Yeah. And may, maybe it can't be fixed is my point. I, I, I think it's a, it's a good point. Shruti, very briefly, I think we do need to close. We can talk about this endlessly, talk I mean, about politics I mean, endlessly. I, I, yeah. I, would, I would reverse it. The very fact that we have spent 45 minutes talking about him. 55, uh, 55, 55 minutes. And tells counting. Me that this yeah. is where the symbolic capital lies of the Congress party. Now, it is mm-hmm. up to the Congress party what it wants to do with it, how it wants to kind of galvanize it or reduce it. And I think that's that's really all to it. Every time something happens, we, the fixation is is on him. And the and, fixation and, 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 is because he's the face of the party of the main yeah. opposition. I, mean, I, think it's, I mean, I actually think yes and no. I mean, I think the party looks quite different to me in the last two years, partly because of Kharge, partly because of many other leaders in the other states, you know, whether it's Gehlot, whether it is, you know, uh, case, you know, in Telangana, Revantra, I mean, there are many people who have, come, you know, who are doing a, a different kind. I mean, it's got a different kind of political leadership okay. thing going. And okay, by, okay, having, okay. Said that, having said that, I do think that it there is a need for a coherent political agenda and culture that, that can only, and only then it will kind of be win- winnable. It okay, cannot I, be I, done I agree. through numbers. It cannot be done through okay. numbers. And that is where Pratap is right today. Too much money has gone into data analytics, not enough actually on words, ideas, and how to actually capture uh, uh, what is going on in, uh, in India. Okay, Tehseen, Tehseen, we do have to close. Go ahead. <laughs> Unmute me. Yeah, the data can. analytics at which the data analytics at which Shruti ended is precisely the reason why the Congress is down. And I'm and I'll end with a anecdote to your to your uh, to your viewers. I was once in a meeting where this so-called data analyst was there, and that's yes. where the first time I heard this. Where the first time I heard this term, black swan. Till then, I'd not heard it. And he, I promise you, I'm not making this up. He gave all the data and he said that 2000, this is in 2018, the data shows Modiji winning 2014 was a black swan event. It will not happen in 2019. So me being me, being a little um, a little uh, cocky, asked, I don't care if Modiji wins or no. I want to check if my guy is becoming prime minister because that's what I want, right? I want Rahulji to be prime minister. That's what I want. Yeah. I said, go on, make your data go the cow. And everyone suddenly thought I was some sort of a rude guy because I asked this question. Come 2019, Modi ji won with a bigger mandate. So I agree with what Shruti says. Please get out of data. Please get out of left-wing lunism. Please get out of wine and cheese and get down onto real earth. The issues of our nation is not the prime minister going in a dressing room or the size of the teeth of the lion on parliament or um, or or or. Twitter trolling. The issues of our country are real. If we can place them before the electorate of the country, we have a fighting chance in 2024. Think about where we've left the legacy of Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru's party. Jawaharlal Nehru, for all his differences with Patel, Rajendra Prasad and Gandhiji, was very polite. So were they. They weren't trolls. Stop being a troll. And one more thing. Our enemies are not journalists. Stop trolling journalists. Our political enemy is BJP. If in 2023 or 2024 entering, it requires a Tetsin Kunala to tell you who are political enemies, maybe the party does have a problem. So step step back and think about it. Journalists are not our enemies. Journalists are only going to report what we say. So let's be a little on the ground. I've had 12 hours of trolling for interviewing Sharvishta Mukherjee. So, uh, you know, uh, I hear you, Tehseen, uh, but I, never mind. Uh, no complaints. Uh, equal opportunity offender is the way I think most journalists should go. Thank you very much uh, to Shruti, to Sadanan, to Tehseen, and earlier to Rashid. It's been a fun conversation. But I do have to say one thing to Shruti. I don't think the fixation on Rahul Gandhi would have been there had Rahul Gandhi not occupied a pivotal position in spearheading the opposition. There has been no sign that he's backing out from that position. And Till that exit, if it happens, I think that fixation of those questions will continue. Be that as it may, the debate carries on. 
another time, another day. Thanks for joining us. And to our audience, thank you for watching. See you soon. Mojo Story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is. And as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line, about one mile from the Gaza Strip, as the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word and thank you for your support.